Welcome back to The Rundown. I'm Meadow Wall. And I'm Simon Hyde. It's everyone's favorite time of the year, Style Show. Here's Mary Catherine Bernard with more information. Style Show is less than a week away. I went around to see how seniors are feeling about this upcoming event. I'm really excited for a Style Show. My group has been practicing. We're going to be the best group out there. We got our clothes the other day, so hopefully we can pull this off and still be the best ones. I'm really excited about the, clo the clothing store I have but I'm worried about messing up. Tomorrow is a very important day in our school's history. Gabby Simons tells us more. You may not know it, but tomorrow is an important day in the life of our school. It was on November 3rd, 1902, right here at the intersection of I-49 and I-20 that our school opened for the first time. Let's take a look back at the long history of our school. In the beginning, there were four priests and 32 students in a three-story building at 1564 Texas Avenue in what was then Southwest Shreveport. What had been a little more than an idea a few years earlier was now a reality, and on Thursday, November 3rd, 1902, St. John's College opened. The school and church were named in honor of St. John Berkman's, a saint who appeared in the 1850s to a dying nun at Sacred Heart Convent at Grand Coteau, Louisiana, and restored her to health. The building was primarily intended to house the faculty, the priests occupied the upper two stories, and the bottom floor was used for the school. A temporary altar was constructed on the second floor. Father John O'Connor founded the school and the church, and there were many obstacles in those early years. It had been a struggle to get the school open, but it was also a struggle to keep it open. But the school survived and is today the oldest high school in Shreveport. Thanks, Gabby. The Flyers have been killing it this season. Candy Carter shares with us this week's sports updates. It's been a busy week in Flyer sports. Here's a look at some of the highlights. The Flyer football team was on the road for a non-district game in Week 9 and came away with an important 28-20 win over Rayville that will go a long way towards improving the Flyers' position in the playoff power rankings. Loyola will play for a share of the district title this week against North Webster and was able to get some momentum going into that game with the exciting win over Rayville. The Loyola defense shut out the Hornets in the second half as the defense came up big for the Flyers. Loyola had a balanced offensive attack going over 200 yards in both rushing and passing. Offensively, uh, they were a really good football team. Uh, you know, they had a lot of weapons on the offensive side. Uh, defense did a great job making adjustments in the second half and uh, coming up with big plays and timely, you know, timely plays when we needed them. Uh, a couple turnovers, picks. Uh, offensively, I felt like we had a lot of things going uh, well uh, in the first half. Uh, second half, you know, we kind of uh, squandered some opportunities with, uh, uh, you know, fumble penalties got us in, in long distance. But uh, really pleased with the way our guys came back and played. Loyola is now six and three overall. Now it's on to the biggest game of the year as the Flyers will meet North Webster Friday night at Mesmer Stadium. A win by Loyola would give the Flyers a share of their third straight district title and set up Loyola for a first round playoff game at home. Uh, it's big, you know, I mean, it's one of our goals. Uh, you know, I know we have a small district, but still, you know, just have that opportunity uh, to hopefully play for a, a district title and a uh, share of a district title and uh, maybe a home playoff game and, uh, you know, really have a, a really good regular season. Uh, it's obviously very exciting. I mean, we obviously felt like we had a game slip away from us and uh, we'll be ready. The volleyball team had a great season and reached its playoff goal. They were knocked out of the playoffs Wednesday in South Louisiana, but it was still a great season. Here's Coach Laura Wilbert with the wrap-up. Uh, we had a great volleyball season this year. I'm really proud of the girls for the way they, they came together uh, and, and finished out the season. Uh, we finished really strong uh, this year in our district play. Uh, went down to the playoffs and, uh, and struggled a little bit in the first set. Uh, came back and played really well in, in the, the next two sets and, and ended up finishing with, a, with a, a, a good performance in that last set, I think. Um, we're graduating seven seniors this year, so we're going we're gonna to be looking to, to rebuild a little bit moving into next year, and hopefully we've got some younger players that will step up. The cross-country team will run the Lakeside meet this weekend and will be getting ready for the state meet in two weeks. The runners that qualify for the meet are for the boys Jonathan English, John Michael Guzan, Spencer Pringle, Van Van Norman, Grant John, Avian Smith, Connor Wellman, and Paxton Floria as an alternate. 
For the girls, Erin Campbell, Sarah Seacaroth, Lauren Lindsay, Cami Miranda, Allison Grace Trawick, Aiden Hurd, Ashley Jackson, and Bridget John as an alternate. Now here's Andrew Flynn again with the swim team update. Despite having only four swimmers, the Loyola swim team finished seventh out of 16 teams at the Battle of the Classes held at Louisiana Tech. On the girls' side, Catherine Bush won the senior division 50 free, 100 free, and 100 backstroke. For the boys, Doug Hearn won the senior division 100 fly and 50 free. Sam Russell won the senior 500 free, and Jonathan English won the 200 free and 500 free junior division. Next up is the Red River Conference Championships to be held November 3rd at Louisiana Tech. Thanks, Kennedy. Here's Kelsey Perry with this week's news. Congratulations to the Loyola girls soccer team who defeated Magnet last night. Varsity won 6-2 and JV tied 1-1. One for one. Way to go, girls! The students who attended Faith Share at lunch with Ms. Brown and Ms. Harris yesterday are invited back to Ms. Brown's room to complete the sharing Monday, November 5th. Lunch will also be provided. Help the football team light up the Northwestern Knights today at our last regular season home game in Pep Rally. Help us help Sister Sharon and the children in need of Shreveport. Both children and adult size coats are needed as well as any size or color of new socks. These items can be brought to the main office. Due to the competition in several teachers' classes, we are extending the Faith Canned Food Drive Pie in the Face competition. All canned food for the Faith Food Drive will be due to Ms. Email's office by Wednesday, November 16th. If every student brings just seven canned goods, we can meet our goal of 3,000 cans for our food basket giveaway. Remember, if we reach our 3,000 can goal, Ms. Johnson and Coach LeBlanc will have a pie thrown in their face. The Drama Club is holding a fundraiser at Parish Taco on November 15th. If you are interested in performing, please fill out the Google Docs form. Everyone is welcome to showcase their talent. Mission Marketplace, November 2nd and 3rd at Brockmore Methodist Church, needs some volunteers to help elders with their walkers, carry packages, and hand out tickets. Volunteers would need to wear a shirt with Loyola on it. They are requesting three students today from 6.30 to 9 p.m., four students tomorrow morning, 9.30 to 11.30 a.m., and four students tomorrow afternoon from 11.30 to 2 p.m. Interested students should contact Ms. Alexander for how to sign up. That's all for the news. Thank you, Kelsey. And now, here's Gray Hodges and Arnold with this week's Random Faculty Fact. Who's Arnold? <clears throat> this... This is Arnold. He's the newest member of the Random Faculty Facts cast. He loves long, awkward silences, horses, and cutting clips in the wrong place so it cuts people off mid sentence. In 1995, I took part in the Scripps Howard National Spelling Bee. Uh, I was in sixth grade at the time. The, that back then, the Spelling Bee was held at the Capitol Hilton, which was about a block away from the White House. Uh, I made it all the way to the sixth round, uh, which was televised at, on ESPN2. They asked me the word gnocchi, and I misspelled it horribly, and that was the end of my Spelling Bee adventure. That's all for this week's Rundown. See you next week.